but it, it's you know it, despite being in the dog days of summer it feels like there are still some interesting things that are happening in tech that people need to be aware of especially those of us in, who work with IT offices, the CIO office, uh, those of us figuring out tech strategy. And I think the biggest one that has been coming up uh, for me in the past couple of weeks is that uh, is the union of government and tech and where we are trying to figure out what to do with AI. Of course, everybody cares about AI, right? And uh, for the most part, we've seen the European Union take the lead on how to set rules about this, but we're starting to see a little effort happen uh, here with uh, in, here in California, uh, as we like making laws, we, we like uh, enforcing things <laughs> and governing things. Um, and uh, you know, we've been looking at this uh, story for a bit now, uh, Charlie, on how uh, it looks like uh, California is going to actually put an effort out into governing AI models. Yeah, so I think I think um, I think it's probably useful for you to go through and summarize so people know what we're talking about if they haven't been following this. But I think the very first thing, just off the off the cuff, is to me the very very big red warning sign. So this is um, California SB ten forty seven. It's just I think just cleared the assembly. It's waiting for California Senate approval before it goes to the governor's office to be signed. Still a lot, you know, questions if it's going to get through that level. But to me, the very big big warning sign is why is California, why is the state passing this? You talked about the EU, which is, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, an entire collection of countries. We've talked in the past here about some of the efforts within the federal government. And here we have the state attempting to regulate something that by its very definition extends outside of the walls of the state. And I think that's going to be part of the foundation. But maybe we to queue it up because you have the, if you don't know about Heyoon, he has a, a background that sort of intersects the exact space that this does between politics and technology. So I think you're a great person to sort of queue up what this is, and then we can dive into whether or not it makes any sense. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I spent about the first uh, decade of my career doing a lot of stuff in politics. I've been a political treasurer and I've worked in uh, aspects of policy. And then I came into tech. And honestly, uh, tech people tend to not like government, government people don't tend to like tech, and neither side really understands the other side, which makes it really fascinating whenever they try to make uh, some sort of uh, law that goes into tech. But in this case, we've got a uh, SB uh, 1047, Senate Bill 1047 in California, which is uh, trying uh, fundamentally to figure out how to manage AI models and how to make sure that AI models that cause uh, big cyber attacks or are involved with uh, large amounts of money uh, that are that in terms of damages, uh, it provides some sort of liability to somebody associated with that AI. You know, the, uh, the basic idea is don't cyber attack people and uh, take hundreds of millions of dollars away. But of course the devil starts being in the details because when you think about the AI model, uh, you have to start figuring out, well, who made the model, who's responsible for the model versus who actually did the attack? And is the attack based on kind of commoditized uh, technology or is it based on something special about the model itself, right? So right now, California is uh, starting to take this approach that basically says uh, any large AI model, something that uh, takes up $10 million or more of development is going to be subject to these laws uh, and uh, punishments and uh, possible damages associated with attacks. Uh, of course, um, when you think about this as a startup company uh, working in AI, you might immediately think, well, I just spent $10 million on my model and now I, you know, what's done with it might be out of my control. And uh, you know that's a challenge. Uh, on the other hand, uh, California, is probably really looking out at Microsoft, Google, Meta, Facebook. Like those are those are the companies that California always wants to actually manage. So you know we're seeing all of these battles starting to come into place about what will be in the bill and what won't be in the bill, uh, for the simple reason that from a political perspective, this is very popular. Nobody wants to be uh, on the side of saying, yeah, AI uh, should go unmanaged. Everybody wants to put some sort of handcuffs or restraints on AI. So regardless of what tech thinks, 
uh, this is going to pass and we're starting to try to figure out what is actually going to be in this bill at the end of the day. <laughs> well, so I think there's a couple things. I, I am not quite as sure as you are that it's going to pass or perhaps that it will pass because we need some kind of the politicians need some kind of air cover, but it's going to be significantly watered down. There's already an interesting bedfellows, a, a uh, collection of both Democrat and Republican federal legislators, so senators and Congress people that are calling on the state not to pass this bill. Um, lots and lots of concern, both, as I mentioned, about jurisdiction, but also just the sense that it's way too early, because it's important to note that all of this stuff that this bill is attempting to regulate, none of it has happened yet. We've not had any situation that would yet be subject to this bill, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and there's all kinds of stipulations in it right now that I think are just just so so much overreach. First of all, right, it's so not only do you have the ten million dollar threshold of of some harm, but you have the hundred million dollar threshold that if you invest in it, they at least in the what I've seen, I don't know what the other limits are. There's a couple of different triggers, but if you pass these triggers, then you have to effectively register your model, and that without any clarity on exactly how, if the state deems it's unsafe, then they would restrict it from being used. And it's just like, you know, how how is this possibly going to happen? And and if it's only within the confines of the jurisdiction of the state, well, what does that even mean? So what if, if does that mean, you know, that people who are logging in with an IP address coming out of the state of California maybe just can't, can't get access because OpenAI decides, well, they have to move out of the state first, but they decide that that they aren't going to let anyone from California use their models, right? That's not good for Californians. That's not good for anything. It, it represents a risk of stifling innovation. So, you know, it's, it's I feel like I, I'm beating the same old drum here, but it's not that I'm opposed to oversight. In fact, I think we need smart oversight. I don't think this is the forum. And I think so far the approaches they're taking are going to do nothing but hurt California in terms of their competitiveness and potentially threaten the innovation cycles of these companies that are moving quickly. And it comes back down to the, the core root of this, that at the end of the day, it's, it's in my opinion, not the maker of the tool, a, a tool like this that can clearly be used for good and evil. Mm -hmm. um, it's the person who's, who's wielding that tool that should be held accountable. And, and you know, this is a, an age, a, a, an age old battle we've been fighting around the world in this country, right, whether it's about guns or other things about, you know, who should be held responsible. And unless these companies are shown to be abusing that, knowingly putting something out and encouraging people to use it in a nefarious manner, you know, that that I think crosses the line. But otherwise, they're the tool makers. And so, you know, I I don't know exactly what the line is. And I think that's the hard part. And I get that politicians are trying to get in front of this. And I and I, I appreciate that, that they're trying to get in front of this. But I, I just, I do not think this is a good bill at all. Yeah, I tend to think about when in technology, something bad happens, like probably the most uh, famous attack that happens on a regular basis is your standard DDoS, your you know, distributed denial of service. This is not a complicated concept. You know, this is just, we're just going to hit your entrance point, you know, a billion times and overwhelm it. It's just kind of a brute force approach. You can do it with a variety of different types of tools. And the tool in question doesn't really uh, you know, define the damage that is done. The damage just happens because there's only so many ways to control input and output out of a computer. And, uh, and honestly, the, the complexity of the AI honestly doesn't have that much to do with how much damage is gonna happen at the end of the day. And I find that a lot of the cyber damage that we're looking at is either due to uh, you know that DDoS type approach or uh, basic user and password mismanagement. Uh, you know, and these things are, are not really dependent on the complexity of the AI to determine what kind of damage it hap happens. It's the user and the target that really define how much damage is happening at the end of the day. Because as complex as tech can be, this is an area that's actually not super complex from uh, a conceptual perspective, uh, uh, we'll, this, like the damages that happen from a security perspective tend to be simple in a conceptual nature and in a way that AI complexity isn't going to really make that much of a difference, I, I don't think. Yeah, and I mean, and look at I think there's going to be some low hanging fruit, I, there's going to be some stuff that is, is 
easier to regulate about saying, hey, we shouldn't allow these models to, you know, drill you drum up the the way how to make an, a, an atomic weapon or something, right? I mean, the or weapons of mass destruction in other ways, simple things like that. I think that there and those are those are simple controls. And I think those are reasonable, right? That that we're going to have a reasonable expectation, and I think that's what's currently the terminology in the in the bill is reasonable care. Uh, you know, okay, fine, that's fair. I think what's really hard is the the truly nefarious uses of AI are ways that are started to your point are super simple, right? I mean, I was just talking to um, uh, my wife. We we're in the process of getting her EU citizenship, and so we're getting a bunch of marriage certificates and birth certificates from family and what have you. And she was asking, well, why are they? Why is this protected? I could, you know, because you have to have like authority, right? You have to have some provenance to be able to get it. I said, because that's like, that is a goldmine for social engineering. I take that sort of data and I feed it into a model and suddenly I can, and now we could even like, I could replicate, if I get a voice friend, I can replicate somebody's voice and now feed in all this information about cousin Joe and they got married at this church. And it's like, suddenly this information is incredibly valuable to do it. Well, there's no way you're going to shut it short of killing AI. You're not going to stop that, right? That's, that is a perfectly, because there's that exact scenario makes, it can be, have a complete, completely innocent use case. And that's what most of the real issues that we're going to have. I mean, I guarantee, in fact, I'm sure we already are getting a whole bunch of our spam is now AI generated. Okay, what do you do? How are we going to stop it? Right? And so that that's it's I, I appreciate the issue. I appreciate the challenge. I, you know, and, and I think the last thing we've talked about this a lot, we're we are at the very beginning. We're at the beginning of the beginning of this whole process. And so most of the real issues we still don't even understand. Right. I feel like even with some of the more complex use cases that come in, like the deep fakes that can happen where we might be able to swap faces and voices and whatever. Sure. Um, that is definitely something to be scared of. Uh, but the same technology that does that is uh, providing our current Snap and Zoom, uh, you know, and Google, uh, you know, masks that we use in consumer technology all the time. Kids are already playing with this stuff. Uh, it provides the voice recognition that we use for a bunch of other technologies, such as voice to text or uh, some of the security uh, tools that we use already. Like all of these things that we want to ban because they can be used maliciously are already often being used either in a harmless or in a useful way. And those consumer uses aren't going to go away just because we want to control the malicious aspects. Yeah, and and again, I look at this. There, the 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 bill is calling for the creation of what they're calling the Board of Frontier Models, which is going to be located inside what an existing government operations agency. So you can already just smell the stink of bureaucracy, and it's going to be really questionable. Are they going to get people that are truly qualified to make any of these assessments on there? How is that? You know, so as I've said probably a hundred times on this podcast, every time we talk about the regulatory aspects of this. I don't have answers. I get it's hard. I'm not trying to be, you know, critical for the sake of being critical. I, I, my criticism is that I feel like this is a bunch of politicians trying to read the tea leaves, and there's clearly we're seeing an upswell and an increase in hesitancy and concern around AI in the general consumer population, um, in the general constituencies that these politicians answer to, and they're trying to show that they're acting on that. And you know, I think. My, to me, I think what's most likely going to happen is is there's they're going to get continued pressure. There's going to be a lot of concern. It's going to get watered down, and it's going to be this in the end meaningless piece of legislation. And like so, all right, whatever. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, I my bet is that there will be some very uh, strict uh, rules and damage uh, limits put into place where. Maybe companies can be held liable for you know, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. But what's going to happen in practice is that the standards are going to be uh, put up to some board, which is going to take five years to figure out simply what they're going to be able to even do. And by then, it, it's all too late. But I am I, I'm, uh, intellectually curious about how this proposed Board of Frontier Models plans to actually govern models when we know that the benchmarks for these models are changing on a weekly, sometimes a daily basis, there are these leaderboards of performance of these models, and we see them, uh, you know, we don't cover it every week just because it would be impossible to cover this horse race, but we're seeing different models 
uh, show up as the top models for all sorts of different use cases on, on a daily, you know, you know, every other day, weekly basis at a rate that, you know, by the time you could even figure out whether it should be governed, it's too late. Like something else has already popped up. That's going to oh, yeah. do the job even well, better. <laughs> And we've talked about this before. It, this is not just going to impact the Microsofts and the Metas and the Googles of the world. $10 million is a very low threshold for just, any large enterprise that is looking at building a model. So this is going to, I mean, so the, the reason I think that it is relevant to the CIO, if you're a CIO of a large enterprise, this matters to you. If you're based in California, you know, again, they haven't talked really about what the limits are, but conceptually, if you have customers, if anybody who interacts with your organization in California, which basically means everybody, um, you may be subject to this. And so I think, you know, that's why I think in the end, it's going to get significantly watered down. The the one part that was somewhat surprising, there's obviously pushback from the major um, AI companies. Um, and other major tech companies, uh, there hasn't yet been public pushback, at least that I've seen from any of the major non-AI enterprise companies. But I mostly think that just because they haven't really woken up yet to the fact that this will, in fact, impact them, or at least could. So, you know, it. it but but to your point, I, I, I on the one hand, I say, think oh, this is so stupid and doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, it's like it's not worth that much time because, to your point, I think by the time they get this all figured out, it's all going to have changed anyway. And um,